dang it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Hey, how you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And I turned on my SDR console running my SDR Play 1 using my G5 RV antenna uh, about a half hour ago. And China Radio out of Cuba was coming in perfect. Just perfect. And then what, by the time I get everything set up to record, it's gone. And it went away at about uh, 2.20, which wasn't on a half hour or an hour. And normally a broadcast will stop on a half hour and the hour. But that one was gone for some reason. Don't know why. Propagation, something, I don't know. It's gone. Then I recorded a show just what, like I'm doing right now and I went to play it back and I had um, SDR console running I had the OBS screen capture software running I had the file manager running I had Chrome running um, and I had the VLC video player not running but open and the numbers down here in this program for the CPU was um, only about 40 percent. Now this number, as let me hover over it again, it says current CPU used by this program. This program. So this doesn't tell me the CPU usage for all programs. Now what I could do, and I'll do it right now because that 20 minute video I recorded it was it was terrible the the audio was fine but the video of this screen right here was very very choppy even though when I was looking at it when I was recording it was smooth it was just the software that was capturing it wasn't keeping up that's the OBS software so let me try something here control alt delete this is not what I have planned to do in this show. And whoa, did you see that? I'm when it when I first opened the task manager, and that does that opening of the task manager does consume a lot of CPU. So I probably got a glitch in the display here of the SDR console. It was a hundred percent. Right now, with everything kind of stagnant, I'm only running SDR console and OBS in the task manager, I'm up to 82%. And you can see the OBS screen capture software is using 28%. And if I click on this to sort it by uh, usage, SDR console is using 45, that's about what it's saying down here. And OBS is using 31. 30, 31, so you add 45 plus 30 is 75% just for those two programs. So, I'm on the border right here. Now, granted, and this is something we, we can experiment with, and this is this is a totally video, different video than I had planned, and since I lost that station anyway, I can't show it to you. Um, let's do a little experimenting here. Now, right now, uh, let me look. Let me go to this program. I am zoomed completely out. So this is 8 megahertz. 8 megahertz. Now, let's... So this is... Uh, right now, this is capturing the full spectrum capability of that SDR Play 1. Now, let's go get the task manager here. And it's, so it's showing... SDR console is about 45%, uh, which is a little lower than this number, a little higher than this number here. So I'm going to, but I'm going to use this number down here. That way I don't have to have this open. So let's just uh, leave it open, but we'll minimize it. And what I'm going to try to show you is the effect of how much of the spectrum you're looking at. So watch this number down here while I change the zoom. I'm going to change it by about a half. 
and this number that might take it a while. It didn't change it. It went down. It's gone down to 40, 39, 38. So it's gone down some. So when you're when you've got a wide spectrum that you're looking at, in my in my case, I was looking at eight megahertz. That uses more CPU power to process that broad spectrum. So if you're trying to run this program and you're kind of maxing out on your CPU power, that's one way to give it a little relief. Another way, besides just using the zoom, is to come up here and change the bandwidth. See, I'm running at 8, which with this computer and my SDR Play 1 in the previous version of, of SDR console 3, the beta version, or one of the beta versions, I couldn't get above 4 megahertz. I mean, if I tried to run 4 megahertz, and that's all I was running, so I wasn't running OBS, it was choppy. It was very choppy. Uh, the audio was choppy. It was unusable. So I had to keep it down to 2 megahertz, or I could go to 3. So I kept it at 2 megahertz. Now, let's just try, even though we're zoomed uh, we're zoomed uh, in, and we're displaying, let's see, 13, 1, 14. We're displaying, who is that cute little signal going by? We're displaying 1 megahertz on the screen. Let me change the bandwidth over here to 2. Look at this number. This is 38.940. Let me change this to 2. There's a little delay there while it switches. And now look at it. 18%. So now, with this narrower bandwidth, if I want to do some demonstrations, and I'm using OBS, I'm using Chrome to use the uh, Frequency Manager website, so I can look up frequencies and uh, whatever, I can do it. i got a plenty of headroom. Let me look at the Task Manager and see what it says. Task Manager right now is saying 60%. 48% overall of all programs. So the OBS software is now the biggie, which is about 21 to 23. STR console dropped down all the way to 6.9. So in this this is something I, I reason I changed what I was going to talk about is this is interesting. Because, and I'll say why it's interesting, is that, as I mentioned before, when I was running the um, previous version, the beta copy of SDR console, I could not run any faster or any broader than a bandwidth of two. It, it wouldn't run. It, would, it was choppy. It was, it was terrible. Now I can go up to the full potential of my SDR which is 8, but then it's using, I think it was like 45 to 50 percent of the CPU, overall CPU, so then there wasn't much left for like OBS, which is using 25 to 30, and then anything else I was using would max it out, you end up with 100. So this is the trade-off, and the beauty of it, he has, and he said this, he has optimized this program so now you can run it, say, at 2 megahertz on a slow computer. Now, this compu particular computer I'm running right now is a quad-core. It's an AMD quad-core. So it's not fabulous. It's not, a, it's not even an i3. It's an AMD processor. I don't know what's equivalent to but it's And it's right now, for my setup, it's the strongest or the most powerful one I've got was given to me by one of my subscribers. So, uh, boy, I really got off the subject, which is um, looking at what's going on on the bands right now. Now, here's a signal. 16, probably it's 1605. And let's turn the audio on. <laughs> okay, that's a Spanish station. And I believe it's one that's uh, in, um, 
Alabama. I believe it's a station in Alabama, which I get quite often, but it's usually in Spanish, so I don't listen to it that much. Now, here's another strong signal right here. Kind of choppy. It's probably not a regular broadcast. The oh, it is. Who thought he might be killed on a dangerous journey and tell the parable. Oh, that's one of the uh, religious stations, probably out of Tennessee, I'm guessing. Um, and see, what I was trying to do before when I was recording is I had Chrome open uh, on the web page short-wave.info so I could look up these frequencies. Because my memory as far as what stations on one fre what frequency is really bad. So I have to look them up. Unlike uh, Jill's, who, 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 remember, who can pull these stations right off the top of his head. He can say, oh, that's 13.650, that's uh, Channel Radio or whatever. He can do that. I can't do that. I'm no good at that anymore. My memory is so bad, I can't even remember what I had for lunch today. That's how bad my memory But you can see there is quite a few signals popping up. Now, right now, it's 3.12 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's a little early in the afternoon. Typically, I don't do shows this time of day because it's too darn hot in my office. Let's see. It's 85 degrees in my office right now. Um, that's another subject. Anyway, I think I'll stop babbling. Um, the original point I was going to make is that I really like this released version of SDR Console 3. It's very easy to set up. I, I initially just set it up. Let me just stop this for a second and show you what you have to do. You have to, initially it comes up with a screen unless you changed it to go in automatically into the program with your default radio. It comes up with this screen here. And you have to initially add your SDRs under by using definitions. And I'm not going to show you how to do that right now. I can do that in another show, but I'm not going to show you right. And so you have to, and it knows a whole bunch of radios. Let me just click on definitions. So you can do a search. And these are all the SDRs that it knows and has the drivers for and everything. So you don't have to install some separate driver and get in the software to talk to it and all that stuff. You just pick one. Okay, so here's mine, SDR Play. So I just pick that, boom, it works. You can also, while I'm here, you can also listen to radios on the internet, these V3 servers, of which I just did that earlier this morning, and at that time there were 67 servers throughout the world that you could use using this program. Uh, I wasn't successful in using it though. I don't know what was wrong. Uh, it gives you a listing and it tells you whether that radio is online or not at the given time. I selected a couple of them and it would not work. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Again, I'm still learning. So anyway, let's cancel this out. And so I have my two dongles. This is the uh, uh, RTL-SDR dongle. And this is my SDR Play 1. It works with a 1, a 1A, and 2, I believe. So that's, and that's all you have to do initially to set this up. You don't have to load any drivers or anything. This program loads. Now, if you got some oddball um, dongle, I'm not sure how you set it up. I don't know. I really, I really don't know. Anyway, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. And why? Oh, I, I was going to say, why did this freeze? Because I stopped it. So let's start again. And we're seeing that right now, it's only using whoop, wrong one, 18 percent of the CPU power and OBS is using about 30 percent so I got plenty of headroom. Anyway, if you enjoyed the show please give me a thumbs up. 
Thanks for watching, and I'm going to do some more shows on this SDR console. There's so many features. I mean, I've showed you a couple of the previous version, like the record functions. Um, one thing I would like to learn, because I never did it, is in favorites and or memory, how I can load a uh, international broadcast database. There's like three or four of those. You can get them in, I think, text files and uh, CVS files. I don't know how to load those in to these databases in this program. Now, uh, favorites, it comes with a bunch of favorites. It comes with all these here. And then I've added these two, which is my best. Here's my best stations that I've received. Here's my local FM stations that I've received. And then, of course, it comes with loaded with broadcast bands, international broadcast bands, the amateur radio broadcast band or bands, marine bands, air bands, utility bands, and WWV. I really like that feature of the memories. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this is recorded properly. Bye-bye. <laughs>